<clears throat> I'm sorry to jump back from the camera, just setting it up right. At least I hope so. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. This is my daily message for the masculine to inspire the feminine heart. Facebook Live. It's a long title. Um, I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And ladies, this one is for you in particular. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I'm doing this earlier because I actually have a a um, an appointment because I'm going to see going to go see Infinity War that's out this weekend. I'm going to see that shortly, so I want to get this done before then because I don't plan on doing any Facebook lives afterwards. <laughs> so that's my <clears throat> motivation why I'm doing that now. So welcome to my daily broadcast. This isn't today's my daily Facebook live number three hundred thirty one. Yeah, I keep track of these. It's kind of fun. And the topic today is for a lot of the women who are my clients, a lot of my friends, and maybe for you too, which is ladies, are you, are you continuing to date weak men? Here's why and some answers. And I'm using the term weak intentionally because I want to get your attention because, um, well, I'll explain. Some of the stuff I've covered before in different ways, but I just thought I'd just hit on how to explain it in a new way, which is under the idea of musical chairs. I'll get to that in a second. So ladies, let me ask you this question. Um... Are you experiencing that you're, you're, the men you attract in your life and the, women, the men you date in your life are weak, especially compared to you? That they're, they're, um, they're nice guys or they're beta-type males or they just they don't stand up. I was one of those, so I know from whence I speak. So I want to give you some input, insight, and understanding. One, of why you're doing it. Two, how to choose differently. And three, what's going on for you that can make a difference. That's a... That's a tall order. We'll see if I can do all three of them. So I'll get back to the musical chairs in a minute. But what's happening is the reason why you're dating these weak men is because you don't, you don't give them room to be masculine men. And I'm, and I'm going to say this carefully because I know you're going to go, what do you mean I don't do this? Like, bear with me. I'm watching three different ways of doing this. Okay, let me approach this one best. First of all, um, if you're in that situation, you're likely very much running your business or you're very charge of the business you're in. So you're in leadership, you're a manager, or you actually run your own company. You're an entrepreneur. You're a, you're a um, successful businesswoman owning your business and, and making, the man, making, a result, making a difference in the world and running your business like a rock star. I think that came out clearly, eventually, which is awesome. I'm grateful you're doing that. However, if you're doing that the way I think you're doing it, you're actually messing up your love life. Because, and I'm going to give you some pieces to this. Okay, this one, I was just looking for the, I was looking for the way in, because I've got the pieces sitting there, but I need to get the way in to get to them. The reason why this is happening is because, in a simplistic term, you are occupying the space of the masculine in your life. And when you meet somebody in the dating arena, the man you're meeting can't occupy that same space. So you t win out, you run the show, and you bury him because he ends up being too weak. So we use the analogy of musical chairs, as I mentioned at the beginning. So musical chairs, imagine if you will, and follow me along with this. Imagine if you will that you and your and this man are at the end of this game of musical chairs. You're only two standing, and there's one chair left, and you're going around in circles, chasing around till the music stops, and one of you sits down. Imagine that chair is the masculine role in the relationship, and you keep winning. Yes, you do, because that's the way you're built. That's the way you're engineered. That's the way you're naturally. Um, wired in a way because of the, what you do in your life and the way you're driven to succeed and have this inner passion to get things done which is deeply respectable, respectable and powerful yet there's an issue here first of all there's this competition for that seat because it's the only seat left except it's not that seat that's the masculine seat in the relationship is really his seat if you want to be in a healthy relationship what you may be forgetting as a woman is all the other seats that are around that are not part of that center seat are the feminine. All of those seats are the feminine. I'll explain what I mean in a second. So imagine, if you will, that you're fighting for the one seat in the middle. When you look up and you go, look around, you see there's 25 chairs around you, and you're going, I can have any one of those. Why would I fight him for this one? Let him have it. And in a way, that's how you can be in a relationship. And this is going to make sense in a minute. Trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm stretching this analogy out a bit to get to make this point. The masculine, which is truly the driven, focused, centered, singular um, consciousness, is the, is the one that usually occupies the role, usually is occupied 
by a man. But a lot of women occupy that space because they're driven in business to succeed. It happens the way it works. Ladies, you have this amazing gift when you remember to be in your feminine, not your masculine, to embrace everything. To the ability to touch, connect, feel, respond to, sense, intuit, everything around you. So in the idea and analogy of musical chairs, your feminine power is in every single seat around the circle. That single seat is the masculine, because singular focus. Mas women's energy is um, more, um, <coughs> excuse me, is more diffuse awareness is the way Alison Armstrong calls it. But basically it's multi-aspected, multifaceted, like a diamond, like a jewel. That sounds nice, doesn't it? So what's it going to do with relationships, you wonder? I can hear you thinking this. Well, this is the thing. When you fight for that masculine role, you push him out of it, which means that he ends up having to choose one of the feminine and energetic spaces, which in end, gently speaking, because he doesn't have the ability to do full feminine um, inhabit inhabitants, he picks one of those other seats. So he's being 125th, so, so to speak, of his full power because he's trying to fit into a small box. When reality is in the feminine, you can have all the boxes. Actually, it's one continuous circuit. But the masculine mindset is fit in a box. So the single seat's easy. Multiple seats are really hard. So you as a woman can occupy all those other seats and let him have the masculine role, which puts him in leadership. Now, in relationship, what this means is that you get to let go of that leadership role and let him lead for you and serve you and take care of you whilst you occupy all the other seats effortlessly and easily because it's your natural, natural uh, repose. Hang on. <clears throat> I'm trying not to choke, so I'm going gonna to chug some water. So excuse me a second. So, this dance of relationship. In the, com in the, in the alignment of masculine and feminine, masculine is single focus, directed, hunter, getting things done, pursuing, making things happen. That's the way masculine runs naturally. The feminine energy is attracting, embracing, collaborative, spreading out, just seeing everything around. And when you occupy the other role, the masculine role, he can't. Because there's only one, in relationship, there's only, only room for one masculine, one feminine energy. And I'm not speaking about gender here. So this is applicable to gay and straight relationships, for those of you wondering. The masculine energy and the feminine energy are two unique polarities, poles, if you were, of the range of that relationship. The more powerful each masculine and feminine polarity is, the stronger the connection, the greater the chemistry, and the more powerful the sex is too. So it's worth noting this stuff. But if you're in the wrong one, your partner has to sit in the other one. It's the, it's the way it works. And for, for a relationship to work, because the polarity is opposite masculine and feminine. It's the way around it is the polarity doesn't care. But it's the polarity that makes relationships. So if you're occupying the masculine role strongly, he's going to be forced into the feminine role if you want to have a healthy relationship, at least energetically speaking, not polarity, um, not healthy in the polarity, but at least the chemistry works. And I've been there three times, so I know what it feels like to be on the wrong side of that conversation, so I'm passionate about this. This is what drives my work, by the way. So what to do? If you're single, ladies, and you're fed up dating weak men, as I'm calling them in this context, basically men who can't occupy the masculine space because you took it away from them, sorry, you did, how do you get out of that space to attract a strong masculine man? The key thing I'm going to say here is the masculine man you want to attract is not one that's going to put you down or dominate you. That's a macho man, undeveloped masculine, not the sort of man I'm talking about. A fully developed, aware, or awakened masculine man is purpose-driven, service-oriented, and here to support you and serve you. That's the sort of man you want to be with, I suspect. And if you do, then your role needs to make space for that, which means disengaging your masculine drive when you're at work, because you can leave it there, and this is the key, is leave your masculine focus and goal-driven and results-oriented and achievement-centered energy in your job, in your career, in your business. And when you go on dates, shift to being receptive, not weak. This is different, and I'm sure you get this clear. Being receptive means being in a place that is aware, awakened, attracting, because it's one of the skills you have, and also dis um, discerning. Because the other thing is also about this is you're not going to be a, a doormat. Being receptive doesn't mean that the man can walk over you. In fact, that's the one thing he can't do. Because if anything, that doormat has spikes in it. And only the right man can walk through it without getting skewered. That's an interesting analogy. I guess it lands. Try that one on. But when you're in a feminine, you're actually in more power. As I mentioned in the musical chairs analogy, 
all the chairs around the center are the feminine because the feminine is way more powerful than the masculine energy when it's connected. So ladies, when you're feminine, you're actually more powerful than you were in your job. Surprise, surprise. That drive, that focus looks powerful, but it's singular focus, it's limited, and it's not as effective as being the feminine, embracing everything, which in the feminine leadership, the awakened, the divine feminine, is where you can reside. When you're in that place, you can, one, be very clear that your energy is attracting a masculine counterpart, a true pol polar opposite in the polar, on the polarity dance of romance and chemistry. Secondly, you're actually in a natural state, which is restorative to you, because if you spend too much time in the masculine in your job, you're going to burn out. You'll burn out your adrenals, you'll burn out, you'll, you'll mess up your hormones, you'll be totally out of alignment because you're not living in your feminine alignment, which organizes and supports your cellular structure. So physical health is a key in this one too. Ladies, when you're in your feminine, truly in your um, divine feminine, as I call it, you can then clearly design, discern and define and know what sort of man you want to be with, and you'll notice the awakened masculine around you. Those weak men... If they were awakened and didn't step into their truth, because truth is, if they were an awakened masculine, they would have even dated you because they can't fight with you. They won't. They'll step free and say, you got it. And they won't necessarily interact with you. Most of the men you attract to probably were unawake. They were asleep or they were um, limited, macho, unaware men. And you want something different from that? You've got to be in your feminine to attract it. You elevate to your, your divine feminine, you'll find a man who's, who's, developed, who's um, elevated to his awakened masculine. You attract that because the feminine energy is an attractive energy. It pulls in, it draws in, it invites in that which it truly decides it wants. Nothing else gets through. So it's not a weak place to be. It's a very strong place and a refined place to be. When you do that, only an awakened man, an awakened masculine man, will be attracted to that because any other man will be scared shitless of it, to be blunt. And any man who tries to dominate that will find it very quickly. He can't because your power is solid and it will hold its space. There's a lot more to this to talk about, and I've talked about this many times before, but I want to get this piece of the puzzle in the conversation because for many women out there, maybe like you, you're fed up with dating men that don't step into the truth. This is one of those cornerstones. It's one of the aspects. So this is just a quick reminder. Yeah, it's a quick reminder because I've got to go out. I'm, I'm going to go see um, Infinity War. <laughs> it's the opening weekend. I've got to go see it. So I want to get this out there to get my daily Facebook Live done. This one may provoke some stuff for you. If this does provoke a response in you, please put it in below. Um, did I say why men are scared? Men aren't, men aren't necessarily scared, they're weak. Sorry, Marcia, thanks for the question. So why are men scared? The men are not scared necessarily. The ones that, who are in the masculine will just simply say, I'm not willing to play that way. If you're in a masculine, awakened ma masculine will, an awakened masculine man will go somewhere else. The man that's attracted to you wants to be, what basically gets to be run by you. He's going to be a weak man who doesn't have direction, doesn't have focus, doesn't have clarity. He may not be scared, but you won't have his balls as a masculine man versus a macho man. The macho man will try to dominate out of fear that he'll lose, out of fear that he's not as strong as you, out of fear that you might be stronger than him, which you are. So that's the way the men are scared. An awakened masculine man doesn't get scared that way. He just gets clear as like, not for me. That simple. I hope that answers your question. Speaking of which, if you watch this in replay, either here on Facebook Live or on YouTube, because it'll be there as well, please put comments in below and I'll respond to them afterwards. If you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them. This is my daily Facebook Live, number 331. You're welcome, Marsha. I'll speak to you soon, by the way. Um, for those of you who are looking for support in the area of love and relationships, ladies, especially when you're challenged by this, this is one of my specialities, as it were. It's one of the things I talk about a lot and I can help you with. Um, please take advantage of my time. Not of me, of my time. Um, I offer, offer a daily, sorry, every day in my daily broadcast, I do offer a conversation that's basically I call it a complimentary clarity conversation. It's a chance to chat and get clear about where you are, where you want to go, and perhaps if I can help you, because I can probably. We'll see. But go to my website, which is barryselby.com, and click on Let's Chat in the, in the menu bar and go from there. Um, you'll find this broadcast on my business page, all 331 of them, on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages of the Masculine. And also on my website, which is barryselby.com find them on the video blog thanks for watching and again if you find this is inspiring to you and you think someone else will watch it share it with them if you have any questions about this topic please put them below and as always once you homework you know what go play it's saturday night saturday today go play have fun no homework tonight <laughs> it's not a school night um take care of yourselves and i will see you again tomorrow with number 332 i'll see you then take care bye